All right. Hello, educators. My name is Ross Braun, and this is the brand new School Life series. What is it? Well, it's a web series sponsored by School Life, where we're going to bring on the greatest educators across the country who are experts in various fields to help you with your school life. So today is episode one. And to get us started, we have the CEO of School Life, our sponsor for this web series, Kim Mady. And we're going to get to know her a little bit more about her company and what she's like. So, Kim, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, yeah. Ross. Absolutely. So we'll get to know about our relationship later on in the, in the, the episode here. But let's talk about you first. So um, let's hear, you know, your journey. Let's hear a little bit about the, the history of school life and where you're at today. Okay, well, school life, it's a family business. Um, we started about 25 years ago um, because my family is truly passionate about education. Um, my sister and I were lucky enough to grow up surrounded by educators. Our parents are retired principals. Um, in fact, our mom was the first female high school principal in the Klein ISD school district in Texas. So that's really cool. And um, our dad was not only a principal, uh, but he had this entrepreneurial spirit and he started a company called EPI, Educational Products Incorporated, which um, he basically pioneered the idea of prepackaged school supplies. Um, so really the seed was planted in us from a super early age. Yeah. And your, your parents, I've met them both. They are just great human beings. And, you know, even they've been out of education for a while and retired, but you can tell they still have that passion for education, you know, just burnt. They're my heroes. They them. really are. Mm -hmm. It, it is, is really cool to see. So that's great. So, so why school life? Like, where did maybe the name come from? Where did the idea of okay. uh, brag tags come from? Okay. So... You know, the word life is an important word. It's, it's really an, it has immense magnitude. It's, it's, there's, there's really no more important place for the youth to be than in school. So you put those words together, school life, and that's kind of, you know, very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so when the, the beginning of brag tags was we were kind of, confabbing one Thanksgiving about how we can um, help all students, not just students that, you know, always excel at sports or academics, but all students. How can we make something affordable for all students to be recognized? And so, you know, we came up with this idea of this kind of military style brag tag that is really budget friendly so that every student will be recognized and know that someone is on their side, someone's proud of them, someone believes in them. So that's yeah. kind of where, where that all came from. That's cool. And I know as a principal, when I was using brag tags, um, that was huge for me. You know, this was something that I could easily afford and something that I knew every student would receive at least one. You know, sometimes when we are looking to recognize and reward, uh, I know I can only afford X amount or these are like, I know every student's going to get at least one. That is and, so great. You know, let's flood these, flood these kids with brag tags as much as we can. So that's great. So one thing, Oh, we got, we got a cameo in the back. Uh, Rizzo, he's probably going to be the school life dog. Uh, on oh, his good. Series, but <laughs> he's going to take a nap. Uh, so I, one thing I'm really passionate about is, is making sure that educators are seen as humans, you know, not just the, the teacher in the classroom, but they have a life outside of, of the school life and they really are seen as, as a human. And so, mm -hmm. Um, let's get to know you a little bit more outside of your role as, you know, the, the CEO of, of School Life. What are some of your personal passions uh, in life up in, in Oregon? Oh, gosh. Hmm. Well, um, I kind of feel really lucky because my personal and professional passions are basically the same. I'm, I'm just really passionate about making a positive impact in as many little ways or big ways as, as I can. I tr truly am. That's, that's where my happy place is. Um, you know, actually, this is a good, I, I just thought of this. I have a, a favorite quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. You probably know it, but it kind of sums up my passion. I think the ending of it is something like, um, 
to, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know that even one life has breathed easier because you have existed, this is to have succeeded. And that kind of sums it all up for me. That's <laughs> great. That is so good. I love that. Um, how about how about this next question? Who influenced you in your life? Well, I'm glad we brought up my parents in the beginning because really my family is the biggest influence on me. My my parents, uh, you know, they are my heroes and they're not only educators, but but like you said, they are the most kind, genuine, generous human beings. Um, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't have been luckier growing up. Um, I really respect my husband. Um, he's a very honest, um, hard worker. And I have to say, now that my, my, my boys are grown, they are big influences. They're positive influences on my life. So I would just say, really, my family is the biggest influence on me. Wow. That's great. That's something that we resonate so much um, together, you know, because I feel the exact same way. And we'll talk about that more here later on in the episode. But, um, you know, family is, is everything. And uh, you talk about your boys and it, I love just the circle of life, you know, and you, you think about raising them and, and how much they probably cause stress and, and worry in your life. And then now you're at a point where you can just truly, you know, enjoy them. And I'm sure you still worry about them. One's living across the world right now, but at the same time, they can pour into your cup as much as they've taken away maybe for Absolutely. some of these years. Absolutely. All right. So we, we talked about brag tags um, and this may be the case, but school life has a, a ton of products and solutions for schools um, when I really feel like, you know, you're making a difference across the country with, with what you're doing with school life. Um, and, you know, I believe that. What is your favorite school life product and why? Okay, well, we've been talking about it. Brag tags are, are absolutely my favorite product. And the reason is, is because they're my family's brainchild. I mean, you know, we originated them 26 years ago. We love that they caught on. There's other people that do, DI, you know, DIY, do-it-yourself brag tags. Lots of teachers do. But, um, you know, we were just striving for that solution and it caught on and, you know, it's, it's just so effective that it's just, it's my favorite product because, you know, we have students that will, will come back to teachers, uh, you know, years later and show them the brag tags that they've created. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite yeah. stories too, is the, the child that made you when you, you know, um, decided, you know, you were going to take another path for your career and they, he, they didn't, they didn't make you a, a card. They made you a brag tag. So that was the impact brag tags made on that child. You know, I have another teacher that told me um, their, 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 their student had to go back into the foster care system and was leaving, but she came up to her and said she would keep this forever. And it was a brag tag that, that Mrs. Larson had given to her. It means a lot. My favorite product. Yeah. I love that. And, and you know, every child can be impacted differently by one small product, you know, and it's not necessarily the physical product. It's how they feel inside when they're receiving it, when they're seeing it. Um, you know, I have had a lot of foster care students in, in my years in education and they don't get to take a lot with them from, from stop to stop. That brag tag was something that they could, they could take with them, you know, mm -hmm. fit in the pocket mm -hmm. and they carry on the memories. So and it's I love you know, that. I love, I, I agree with that. And I love how it stimulates this like friendly competition and unites these kids. They, they kind of have this awareness of, you know, we're all in this together. Look at this tag you got. Oh, I didn't get that one. And they kind of, so it's a, yeah. it's a really neat thing that brings kids together. <clears throat> it is, you know, I, I love that too. And I, I had some, some naysay or teachers, you know, in our building, when we first started it. And they said, you know, why am I going to reward a student that hasn't done the right thing for three weeks? And then today he does. And the student beside them has been doing this, the exact same, you know, right thing for three weeks straight. And they're not getting rewarded. Just kids get it, right? When, when that, that kid is rewarded for the first time in three weeks, guess who's the biggest champion in the room? Exactly. The one right next to him that's been doing the right thing for three weeks. You know, exactly. it is amazing to see kids um, show empathy the way that they have. And it's just naturally instilled inside them. And so 
And uh, that intrinsic right? value of like that, yeah. what you're, exactly what you're saying is that it teaches someone else how good it feels that someone else is the person next to them is getting, is getting it and is, is doing yes. better. And is, you know, it's like, they're proud, you know, how we can be proud of our kids as parents and that's how kids yeah. can feel as well. So it's neat. Yeah. It is neat to see. I love it. So, um, in this school life series, uh, we're going to have, like I said, a lot of guests on, and they're going to share a lot of great topics, um, that they are experts in, in their field. Um, so, but we're going to go through the, some of the same questions. Like I've, I've asked you, and, and I, we're always going to end with two things, um, is one, what advice do you have to educators? This is not an easy time in education. Um, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic, trying to figure out still where we're at in education. Uh, society is back to maybe not looking at teachers uh, from the best lens. What advice do you have for them? Gosh. Oh my gosh. I try to get all the advice I can from educators, not the other way around. But, um, you know, I think ask for help. We're here. You know, there's so many resources and so many people that want to help, you know, ask for help from your other teachers, from your peers, from your principals, you know, from whoever, you know, uh, you know, I mean, I really can't give educators advice because they are where, I get my inspiration and advice, but I think as human beings, the more we can show compassion and consistency and unconditional love, the more secure we can make others feel. And that secure and balanced, you know, secure. I think that when people are secure and balanced, um, they're happier and we are all better off because of it. So I, I do believe in being relentlessly positive. Um, so I guess that is that can be some advice. That's advice. <laughs> no, that's great. I love that. You know, that's just great advice for, for humans <laughs> and educators are humans. Like we talked about. Mm -hmm. and so I love that. Now, um, it may be similar to, but what advice would you give to the students that, you know, seven, eight year old is sitting in class right now? What, what would you tell them? I think I would take from your playbook and I would say, believe in yourself, truly yeah. believe in yourself. I know that you, that's, that's your mantra and I love it. And it's true that we want students to believe in themselves as much as we do. And so if they have that, if they have that belief that someone is on their side and they can start to get that center inside of them of, you know what, I am okay. And I am going to keep going forward. No matter if I have roadblocks, I'm not giving up. I'm believing in myself. That's very important for students, young students. Love that. I love it. Well, Kim, hopefully our viewers and whether it's one fifty five thousand, you know, that's the idea of, of this series is to provide support, provide an educational resource um, for educators. We're going to try to keep it short every week, 20, 30 minutes where they can listen on the commute to school. Or they can listen during their prep, watch us, listen to us. We're going to put it out everywhere. Um, and just try to help them and make an impact. You know, awesome. we don't want anything other than just making, making an, an impact, impact in our education system um, better for students and for staff. So, awesome. Well, can I spin it you. around now? Oh, my pleasure. My yeah. gosh, thank you. Can I spin it around Absolutely. now and ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'm going to be the host every week. So I guess <laughs> our good. viewers get to know a little bit more. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to just kind of ask you the same questions in a way that you ask me, like, um, tell us about your journey and how you got here. Okay, well, uh, I pride myself on being a forever educator. Um, and that journey was not necessarily, you know, one I knew from age 10. Um, it wasn't until I was a senior in high school and I started uh, volunteering in our elementary that I thought this is what I want to do with my life, you know, making an impact. And so um, I really saw the impact that I was making at that time in a couple uh, young boys in our school um, that didn't have a father figure in their life. And so um, that was just kind of what clicked for me. And I said, I want to make an impact on, on you know, young boys that, that don't have a positive male role model in their life. And I'm going to do that through teaching and education. And so um, that's where it started. And then as I got into it farther and farther, 
uh, I realized that I was making it a bigger impact than just a handful of boys a year. And, and it was both male and female and in cross grade levels and, um, it really within our community. And then, um, as I grew farther than that, I thought, you know, you know, well, I want to do this on a larger scale and I can, you know, make an impact with teachers and they can have an impact in their classroom. And, um, as that happened, some doors opened and I stepped into administration and, um, really felt like we were making a change in our school. And so, um, I, I was in administration for six years and, and loved every minute of it and was really making an impact. Um, but I wanted to do more. I want to make an impact now in more schools across the country. And so uh, and you, some doors you, opened. Yeah, go ahead. No, well, I was just going to say, and in, in during that time, those six years, you were making such a big impact, but you were also invited to be a national speaker because of the impact you were making. Yeah, yeah and, and just relationships and doors opened. And, and uh, I was asked to, to join the Get Your Teach On Network and, and present. Uh, on the lead on side, get your lead on at a regional conference and a couple of regional conferences. And then uh, last summer at nationals in Dallas, Texas, in front of uh, 5,500 educators. It was just unbelievable, uh, the energy and, and passion that was there at that conference that week. Um, and then outside of that, you know, traveling around, presenting and speaking to schools around the country. And it, it's just the most um, rewarding experience possible so so, so that's that's my educational journey and then as you know um yes i'm the over the moon at early that. spring <laughs> you and i had a conversation and um one thing led to another and and here i am now um in as a part of the school life family as your your vice president of business development, but more importantly, vice president of positive education, right? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I am. I'm over the moon. I just I I pinch myself going, how did this happen? I'm so happy about it. But what what was your gut like? Why did you choose school life? Like what 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 was your calling to school life? That's a great question. Um, and and I. I it was the hardest decision I've, I've ever made in my life. I, I, for a fact, because I had a good thing going, you know, I, I felt like I, I was making a difference in our school and, and, you know, everything, but, um, it came down to two things. One, I, the principalship was draining me as, as a father, as a husband, um, and as a human. And I really felt like I wasn't at my best, uh, mentally. And I really just wasn't uh, who I wanted to be. And then on the other side, I saw the potential of impact that I could make with school life um, and you. And, and then in the conversations that uh, we had together, I saw how much you believed in me. And that was that was it. I, I said, you know, you, you believe in me, not just as VP of your company, but you believed in me as a, a person and as a human. I and I, I'm emotional just like thinking about that because um, the month of May was was crazy. It was the most um, definitely emotional month I've had probably in my life. And I can imagine and, uh, when you. But it but it was such a, a, a great feeling because when I made the decision and said, OK, this is it. The stress was gone. The weight was gone. Um, and even just the past month, you know, I've seen a lot of folks from my old school. Um, I've seen a lot of family members and they're like, we love this version of you. Oh, <laughs> We've great. never seen you this happy. And that, that just reassures me that I made, made the right decision. decision. And then, you know, you, know, you I... and I were in Houston last week and, and just being together in that time and with Aaron, our, you know, marketing director and the, the great people down in the, at the Houston, uh, facility, like it was so reassuring that, you know, this is who I want to align with. These are the people that, um, I want to make a difference with. And so. It's true. It. And I think, I think I know so much of your stress was you put so much of your heart and soul into your students and your staff. And I was worried because I knew I wanted, we wanted you on our team so badly, but I wanted to give you that space because I know how passionate you are about 
your your staff and your students. And and now I think also when you've made that leap, the stress not only fell off, but it, you've kind of gone into this rhythm that you're still involved. You're still going yeah. to be involved with the staff and the students and your community. And that's really, really important. Yeah, it is. And, and being able to stay here and, and work remotely and, and travel with you, um, it's just been great. And it's been allowing me to stay involved in our community. And and honestly, I think our community and our school is getting a better version of me as well. Exactly. Um, and mm -hmm. we'll probably have a, a better impact than what I was making. So, Well, I know so I one of your... Oh, go ahead, Ross. Sorry. I was just going to say, I'll, I'll never be able to thank you enough for the opportunity and, and for believing in me. Well, thank you. No, it's, I would love to thank you constantly every day. And I do, you see my emails. Yeah. Thank you. We love you here. <laughs> so, um, I do, I, I think I know one of your personal passions. So I'm curious about what your passions are as a human. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked already about, you know, just making a positive impact on, on every person that I come across, whether that's a student, a teacher, a principal, or, the, the the person behind me in the at the grocery store you know uh, my one of my good friends he he jokes you know you don't go anywhere and meet someone new and that's just who i am because that person that's behind me in the grocery store maybe they needed to have that positive interaction today maybe they were having a, a terrible day and they just needed five minutes of of a positive conversation and so that's really one of my personal um passions is just making a difference. And I saw you at Starbucks that do that. I saw you at Starbucks say, Hey, you were, I don't even know how you knew that he was a military. And you said, Hey, thank you for your service. And his, the smile on his face was, was. Yeah. Priceless. Man, yeah. Well, it's, those people, people need to hear that and they need that type of, of connection. So that's it. And then just personally, uh, family, like we talked about like just, being with family and quality family time, call them, you know, those core memories, making with our kids. Um, we love to go to the lake. Yeah. Yep. We love to go down to Lake Cumberland in Kentucky and um, be just on the lake and, and having those type of, of fun times. And, and then um, lastly, I think literacy and reading. I love to read and, and hopefully, you know, spreading that message that the importance of, of reading and literacy. And so um, try to spend time every day. Um, with a book and reading some pages. Cool. Well, so um, do you have any advice for educators? Yeah, um, have advice for educators. I, I, I recently wrote a blog, Happy New Year, and, and loaded it up with all kinds of advice. And so for me, it's kind of hard to pinpoint it down to one. But um, I think overall, educators need to know that they are making a difference every day. And for educators, um, we don't get to see our harvest at the end of the school year, you know, or on a day-to-day -day basis. And a lot of times the harvest is in 20 years or in 10 years, um, and we may not get to see it. We just have to trust that we're doing it and that we are making a difference. So continue to show up for your students and continue to, to do that because you are making a difference. Love it. Love it. Well, so yeah. I guess what will this podcast series be all about? I mean, I, I'm loving it. I love yeah. that you're doing this, but what's the, I guess, the crux of the podcast? Yeah, I'm so excited for it. Uh, I know there's a lot of, you know, different podcasts and uh, things out there for educators, and we just want to be another resource, right? You know, it, it, each week or every other week, I think is what we've kind of landed on what we're going to do this. We're going to have a guest on the series. And we're going to cover a topic in education that I feel, we feel educators need help with. And so if you see the topic as an educator and you say, yes, I need this, please listen, give it a listen. Uh, we're going to have just gurus on certain topics that I'm saying like the best in the country um, on various topics are going to share their insights and their passion. Um, so as an educator, whether you're a principal, teacher, there's going to be something for everybody. Um, and we hope that you just give it a listen. Hopefully you take something from it. Um, I say that when I speak, like, I'm going to give you an hour of content. Take one thing. All right? Don't try to tackle everything and take 50 ideas. Take one thing or take two or three things, but um, take it and, and use it. And so that's going to be the idea is just 
providing a, a positive image on education and providing a resource that educators can use. Great. Awesome. Yay. Cool. All right. <laughs> well, hey, hopefully they got to know us a little bit more. Um, next week, we're going to get kicked off with Todd Nestloni, um, who is my best friend um, and a national presenter, speaker, um, and just uh, a great human being. And he's high energy. Share, oh, tons of high energy. So he's going to be our first guest um, after you, of course, and he's going to really get us kicked off. And Yay. I'm excited for that conversation. So thank you again, Kim. Thank and you. Thank you, educators, for what you do. We're all in this together. Have a great yes. day. Thank you.